Breakfast puppies? Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving game masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! Oh, that, this that, is going to be a fun experiment. That was like putting your ear up to the popcorn machine <laughs> as it just exploded. Yeah, yeah. I got to remember that this condenser is a lot different than the dynamics yeah. that we're using. So we're doing a thing. Uh, we each have a different microphone today. I'm yeah. the control, apparently. Yes. Well, something else that we're doing is one of you is going to read that new review that we got on iTunes. I'd uh, love to. Yeah, go ahead and take that, Matthew. All right. I was really excited. I check in. Like, it's, it was pretty rad. Yeah. Did, yeah. <laughs> uh, where are we going? Where are we because I was signed up so that it's supposed to email me anytime I get a, uh, anytime we get a review. I don't get an email. Nothing. No. Ah. No. Well, it's like with my book on Amazon. I'm supposed to same thing. I'm supposed to get an email when any anytime someone buys it or anytime someone leaves a review. Okay. And it didn't happen. Yeah. Yay. Automation. All right. That one guy, PDX, Woo-hoo. said this podcast killed the sheriff. Five stars. I love this show. It feels like it was made exactly for me. The guys are hilarious and knowledgeable. I think the greatest praise I can give is that this show, that this is a show about movies and gaming that makes me want to watch more movies and play more games. So, dear listener, if you leave us a review, (laughs) I'd like to start a trend here because I think our last podcast says this, or the last review, I think, says this podcast saved Saved my my marriage. marriage. Yeah. What I would like, listener, is if you leave us a review, please do it in the format of this podcast verb thing so mm-hmm. this podcast did a thing let us know what our podcast did for you did i cure your erectile dysfunction we want to know <laughs> i i, was I say i've seen threads like this on reddit this will not end well <laughs> i i liked how when i when i read the heading i heard it in your voice matthew of that i, <laughs> well, I killed, killed the sheriff that one <laughs> killed the sheriff. I, 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 I refuse i, I wasn't going to do it <laughs> man i can really turn the game down on these yeah <laughs> this is good He's so anyway, good. thanks for tuning in uh, to this this show. We're doing the Insurables, <laughs> the 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 Incredibles, the Incredibles <laughs> from 2004. And I'm Matthew, and I'm Dusty, and I'm Nathaniel, and you're listening to Half Movies, Will Game, and once again, spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie, it's go watch it. The, yeah, the movie came out in 2004. Yeah, you, uh, if you have kids, you've seen this movie. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, if you're if if you've seen this movie easily. It's on TNT all the time. Um, yeah. Uh, how many? There's like 16 sequels of this, or no, Two. just one. No, just uh, one. Just yes. one. Yeah. There's a few video game. I think there's a couple video games for the original Xbox and then 360. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and there are a couple computer games also. But yeah, the uh, the sequel was done just here this last year, and the director uh, Brian yeah. Burr, Brad Bird, not Brian, Brad Bird, <laughs> Bill Burr. <laughs> <That'd be hilarious. laughs> He he always said that he had an idea in his head, but it, the only way he would do a sequel is if it could top this one. And he had bits and pieces. He had the jigsaw puzzle, but it never came to fruition oh, until yeah, all a those, few years all ago. Scattered plots yeah. building towards such a such a convoluted conclusion. Tell us how you really feel about this movie, Matthew. You know, I'll, I will. It was uh, it was all right. It was standard Pixar fare, one each. This, this uh, what was, do you mean by yeah, one? Each? What do you mean by that? I don't get it's, that it's reference. A military term. Okay. okay. Were they, you in the military? It means wh- wh- whatever. Um, what does it mean? <laughs> it, it it means that it is the same as the one before. It Pixar is, it has is, a formula, and their formula creates success. I don't think they've ever failed. So, are you saying that Pixar is the Nickelback of animation? I think that they are much better than Nickelback <laughs> because not all formulas are bad. No, I yeah, just no. say this. This is how it reminded me yeah. of what the last show was. <laughs> This is how you're in my... I love this movie. This, this is, is a good movie. I yeah. really like it as well. It's one that they can put in the background and just have it go. Is it like, do you have a nostalgia? I think it's... A, did you watch it early or what? I saw it in the theater. I was 24 when okay. it came out. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the very few movies that I've seen in the theater multiple times on a first run. Okay. I don't even see first run movies usually, but I usually go see a Pixar movie. Yeah. In fact... 
The only other Pixar movies that I've done this with were Bugs Life, which came out before, which I was rooting for to win. I was too. I voted for it. It's an ultimate D and D movie, yeah. and Inside Out, which is yeah. amazing. Inside Out is yeah. it, it, that movie that hit the emotions? Yeah, yeah. a lot, but, and it was so, it's supposed to. This movie didn't hit emotional points for me, but I was laughing the whole time, even last night when we were watching it. I thought it was fun. It was mm. a fun movie. So about a year before trailers for this movie started coming out, uh, my my buddy Joey and I, we we sat down and we were talking about like, hey, well, it was more his idea than mine. I just kind of helped add to it. But we were talking about, hey, let's do a movie where supers are forced into retirement. We we're thinking about these ideas. You know, let's do this. And they have to come out and fight this one big baddie. And then we saw trailers for this and we just kind of ripped up, well, deleted the file pretty much. So we all enjoyed True Lies, didn't yeah. we? Mm-hmm. This is just True Lies, the superhero version. No, I disagree. Okay. I, I disagree Guy, also. Guy's lying to his wife. He's going out and doing secret super stuff. She finds yeah, out. She gets she, caught up in it. Spy. No, yeah. And she, she finds and, out. And she gets super. caught up in it. And then in the end, it's all of the family together. I mean, it's. <laughs> but she's a super also i mean the only thing he's really hiding is his his like training again. yeah his, he's lying to her well That's- he's also hiding the fact no i mean she is clearly aware that he is training because a wife will know when her husband is getting in shape however and of course their you know their sex life increase their butt slapping increase all that stuff so I, she's clear clearly aware of the training he is lying to her about continuing to pursue super heroic efforts behind your back and has been doing so for years. I don't really see, I don't see the parallels to true lies personally. Yeah, it's no, same I, basic I, template. I, 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 I get the template, but I stylistically and feel was completely different. Um, I just thought it was a fun was movie. So annoying. Oh, Holly Hunter. I love yeah. Holly Hunter. Oh, Holly I Hunter is it. great. I mean, anyone can do Holly Hunter. What do we have that we can, put in our mouth here did you have marbles where are your dice oh. Oh. It, it does it sounds like she's talking through marbles kind of like uh leia did post recovery at the the last one she sounded a lot like leia to me hmm. oh grandma leia yeah doesn't yeah, she when what, you think about it why are they kind of talking well, it, it, yeah it's a clinch it's a clinch like, jaw like she was yeah. clenching her jaw and talking out of it i guess that's kind of how holly hunter does it for the character but i also noticed that the character if you watch her mouth, she's frequently speaking that way, mm. too. Frequent. F- yes, that's a word. <laughs> I think one of my favorite movies of Holly Hunter is called Always, which is a remake. It's got Richard Dreyfuss, and it's the last movie for uh, Hepburn okay. before she passed away. Side tangent. Yeah. That being said, I thought she was the better hero by by far. Oh, absolutely. She was far more capable. Yeah. Than, she, and much more responsible yeah. of, a, of a superhero. Yeah. And more versatile. His yeah. whole thing was that he could hit real hard. Yeah, he was, Her he was, thing he was, was kind like, of dumb. I'm a boat now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right on. Yeah. And well, the, the, the template for those characters, there was actually a, a bit of a, of a legal squabble with, um, Marvel? Fantastic Four, because oh. of fan- this is basically a Fantastic Four family. <laughs> you yeah. have Invisible Girl, and then you have, have Violet, and then you've got... Uh, Shrinking Violet. I, I could have fucking vomited right there. <laughs> and then Shrinking? you have Jack yeah, Jack. Sh- sh- Shrinking Violet, it's a term for something that's shy and turns away, and it's practically invisible. Okay. And the daughter's name is Violet. Okay. Jesus Christ, I you're f- both authors. I feel like you were just, <laughs> yeah, just because I'm an, I mean, I'm looking for yeah, but I don't here. know all the rules and terms. I just thought you guys might have I've never heard more. that term before. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've never heard that one either. Okay. All right. I'm not an author. I'm a game designer. Thank you very much. <laughs> I've, I've, I own your books. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to go through this in these negotiations because in, initially Violet's character was called Invisigirl and and Vi- and the uh in the in the Fantastic Four she is Invisigirl. So they had to Invisible Woman. Invis- Invisible Woman, <laughs> Invisigirl. Uh they had to get some, different, they had to get some one has special blossomed they, to had, maturity. they had to get some special yeah, permission. Yeah, Batboy is not Batman, to- I'm just saying. <laughs> Sorry. I'm okay. going to stab <laughs> both of you. Permission to do uh to use Invisigirl. Uh, because it was in the comic books for the Fantastic Four, apparently. So, Dusty, was this Disney era Pixar? This was 2004, so this was straight up Pixar. Okay, so that means that they didn't have to worry about the 
a lot of the Disney. They, they weren't working with a lot of the Disney Marvel licensing. No. They were all on their own. Yeah, they were all on their own to the point of where the director, Brad Bird, he was just he just came off the Iron Giant. And that was a uh, box office bomb. Like that totally. And that's go- so sad. Yeah. He and it, and it kind of in reading a lot of the interviews that he did, he didn't want to have to sacrifice his family for getting the notoriety as a director that he wanted. So he went when he I went knew to that's how that works. <laughs> so, Come to the dark God, little belly. It's time to it's a director's casting family. couch. Um, so he whoa, basically, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Can we just talk about cutting out hearts, man. Let's, let's keep. <laughs> so he basically went into Pixar and said, listen, I, I want to do this movie. He pitched this movie. And initially the production company went, what you want to do with the computer graphics that are available now, because the computer animation wasn't doing a lot of human molding at that point, because it wasn't, it wasn't good enough yet to really do realistic human molding. I said, what you want to do is going to take like 10 years to get the textures done the way that we, the way that you want. And it's going to cost like $500 million. So the no. directors went, the director went and said, okay, give me everybody that in, in your art departments that are the black sheeps that want to do what they want to do, but you won't let them and let me see what they can do. And they churned out this movie for notable, noticeably less than what was projected. <laughs> I was going to say, like, wasn't that, uh, that entirely CG, um, Final Fantasy movie done like years before this. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. It it was terrible, but the CG was okay. Yes, the movie sucked. Yeah, for for the time, yeah. But this these they were trying to make yeah. with these they were trying to make them a little as realistic as they could, but still have yeah. super caricatures. You know, like I'm just saying, I, I, I don't believe buff. that it was not capable of doing it at that time. Not as it well was. as it could. What they what they wanted to do, what he was pitching, they were like, we you can't do this. We don't have the tech for it yet. And they, but much like James Cameron with the red camera, they were like, fuck it. We made it. We did. We it. invented something. Yeah. Whereas Sony with Final Fantasy was simply just like, let's throw gobs of money at this until it happens. But let's not throw gobs of money at good writing. Yeah. I looked at that <laughs> movie. Well, they did as, for Final Fantasy. So yeah, yeah, why bother yeah. with the movie? I looked at that yeah. movie as all the cut scenes of a video game put together. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was, yeah, that was that. Which I would rather have watched than (laughs) what we did watch so those that aren't aware of the director brad bird he did as i said he did the iron giant which is an amazing movie he also did ratatouille which is another good pixar movie uh tomorrowland recently with george clooney which kind of bombed which is based off the disney tomorrow tomorrowland incredibles 2 and also mission impossible ghost protocol but in this movie what else did he do dusty there's a lot he did in this movie. Yeah, I know, but he was a character. Oh, yeah. In he, the movie. Yeah, he was he was he was the nemesis in the movie. He was the No, bat. that was Jason Lee. No, yeah. I know. No, yeah, yeah. his he was his facial, that character was based off of him. No, he was the voice of the costume designer. Yes. Oh, really? Edna. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That was, sorry. That, sorry. that was my favorite character in the whole thing. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought you were going someplace <laughs> else with that. Yeah, sorry about that. That uh yeah, because the um uh, was it Edna Mode or yeah. something? Yeah, Jason Lee, he played, you know, Incredible Boy or Syndrome, and the, the 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 look of that character was based off of the director, the hair, the facial yeah. structure, everything. I thought that's where you were going. That's why I was like, uh, I don't know. You know, through this whole thing, I, I kept thinking that Patrick Warbur- Warburton mm-hmm. should have played Bob. Yeah, I I would have preferred that. Yeah. I think Craig Nelson did a fine job. So he's got an emotive voice. I do love Patrick Warburton. He's good. No, he's a, he's a great actor. His I just, role in the Orville. Mm-hmm. You've yeah. seen season two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just pounding it. Just, that show is so good. Yeah. I love that show. Uh, so, I, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. I, well, there, one thing I did like was the Cape montage. That was fantastic. I do like that. They tie it back into the end. Yeah. To reincorporate. It's the Chekhov's Cape. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> If you see a cape, it must go off. (laughs) (laughs) Now, a lot of people that I remember when this movie came out, they were kind of curious, like, like, what year is this supposed to be set in? 
uh, or there's always that question. But it, 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 there are there are things that you can see that show up on newspapers and what. And for those of you that don't know, the movie was set in an alternate universe from the of the 1960s. So okay. some people have questioned that, and it's like it's I was not present guess 70s. day. Yeah, it's, it's the 1960s. The music definitely had a Charlie's Angel feel to it. I was getting it by the furniture in yeah. their house. Oh, okay. The, the, no, that, that yeah, pedestal yeah. furniture yeah. and the, yeah. Well, the director had imagined everything, the whole movie, he wanted to be an homage to those 1960s comic books and spy films. The the layer was first rate. I'll give whoever oh, designed yeah. that. That was a brilliant layer. The lava yeah. window. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I want a lava window. Everybody wants a lava window. <laughs> yeah. I liked Mirage a lot. She was very emotive. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I thought that the character had a lot of depth. In as little as you see of that character on the screen, she was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I went so far that later in this, I actually went to give her an alignment. Oh, oh <laughs> nice. very. Yeah. We'll get into that later. Uh, actually, the director uh, during the production, uh, Miyazaki of Studio uh, Ghibli, or is it Ghibli? Sure. It's Ghibli. It's, is it Ghibli? Thank you for correcting me. He visited Pixar and saw the the story reels, and Bird asked if the reels made any sense to him or if they were just American nonsense, and Miyazaki had replied through his interpreter, uh, I th- quote, I think it's a very adventurous thing that you're trying to do in an American film, end quote, which... Is kind of a double-edged sword. He's kind of going, <laughs> in American film. It's kind know. of like a backhanded compliment. What, yeah. what, what you morons do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. You finished. You are the second grade Olympian. <laughs> wow. The best. Well, I do like at the end when the kids trying out for the track and they're like, oh, no, 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 not too fast. Yeah, second. Like, a solid second. And the other dudes looking at him like, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not going off on hate in this movie. No, I didn't think that you um, were. But it just it was it was a Pixar it, movie. It had a yeah. template, it had yeah. the beats, and you could I, I'll agree with that. There, there are the beats, there are the tropes that you see, and they, they come along at, at specific points, yeah. and just enough to keep the parents from opening their veins while they watch it for the fourteenth time with the child. I honestly <laughs> think most of their movies are aimed at adults who who can appreciate a crass humor and can can see the subtleties of it built in I've, there. I've, yeah. I've grown up with yeah. kids around. I would like to agree with you, but you are absolutely incorrect. Kids will eat that shit like a oh, crackhead yeah. finding mm-hmm. a bag of yeah, cocaine, yeah, yeah. man. I mean, they <laughs> Pixar is their favorite thing. Like, of course. Yeah. Which is cars, why Disney Cars 2, yeah. Cars 3. Well, Cars, cars 2 game. and 3 weren't made by Pixar. Cars, Only Cars was. Stupid. It's Doc Hollywood. No, it's it's this is literally crack for kids. Also, cars was crap. Yeah, <laughs> I, agree. I agree. I agree with you. That that's why it wasn't on our voting list. <laughs> because it would have received zero. Or planes. Bob's no, planes wasn't was Pixar. Oh, but okay. Bob's boss was annoying. He I, was annoying. Was Wallace too many Shawn, tropes. though. I just love Wallace Shawn. I can't I can't hate him. The French villain, Bomb Voyage. <laughs> That felt Venture Brothers. Uh, a side note on that: they initially yeah. named him Bomb Perion, <laughs> and the uh, the champagne maker would not sign off on using licensing for Perion, so they changed him to Bomb Voyage. Perion. Apparently, it's trademarked by Dom Perion. <laughs> and that goes back to the. Uh, I, I was hoping you kind of get a little angry on that, like. Uh, Brad Pitt's Rose. Oh no, I, I got uh, Frozone here. <laughs> I loved him. Frozone. Uh, he didn't have a fro though. He was like Fro-zone, Ozone, but Frozone. Oh, the, dir- the director wanted someone yeah. that he loved their voice, so he went yeah. to Samuel L. Jackson. That was pretty much the only reason he wanted an extremely distinct voice in his movie, and that's who we got. And that's fine. I, I, honey, where is my super suit? Why do you need to know? I mean, come on. I love it's fun. pretty much anything that Samuel L. Jackson is, is in, I will watch, and I think it's great. Like Snakes on a Plane. I fucking love that I movie. I love Snakes on a Plane. We should do that next. Only if we get to do Sharknado as well. I'm I'm fine with throwing Sharknado Oh, my God, mix. a double feature. <laughs> Which Sharknado? There's four of them now. And They're one, all good. I'm and like, and one of them goes through time, is time traveling. So, Ooh. Which is the one where she falls from space inside a shark giving birth? I don't know. I know That's one of them's the one got. I, a, want to. <laughs> I know one of them's got America's favorite fast food spooks model. Okay, uh, okay. If we're gonna put this one up for a poll, let's do Sharknado. <laughs> what was the other Snakes one? on a plane. Snakes on a plane. Uh, Iron Sky. 
Uh, that doesn't fit. That doesn't How fit. Do you mean that doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. It's not a. It's not an really? animal. St- it's an yeah. animal. St- yeah, it's got to be. Okay. Anaconda? No, no, no that one. No, that one tried no, to take itself seriously. Yeah. It's got to be stupid. Zombievers. 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 Yes. <laughs> yeah. You already right. know that because I played it at work. We, 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 yeah. 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 All right. We've got the makings of another poll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll work on it. Uh, yeah, and if you like can it. think of a fourth that would fit that theme, please leave a comment in the section below. Yeah. Uh, Lily Tomlin actually was originally supposed to play the role of Edna, uh, but turned it down. And I think I think I like how Edna was made with with the director doing that. No capes. I like that, but I I could definitely see Lily Tomlin playing that and chewing up every bit of screen time that she would have gotten or pixel time. From what I have heard, Pixar has this accidental trend of directors or producers sitting in for readings for hard to cast roles Mm -hmm. and landing the role. And then like everyone else deciding, Nope, that was too good. You have to do it now. And I think Edna was one and Roz from monsters Inc was one where someone just set in for the reading. There's, there's a guy, uh, the guy that played the, uh, the main crew chief in Battlestar Galactica, 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 just chief. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I forget chief the big yeah, yeah. bear type guy oh, I don't know. um no. he just sits in and uh, just for he's always like knows a lot of directors he just sits in and reads and he gets a lot of parts just because he they're like yeah it's what you just said yeah you did really good on that you want this bit part yeah all right right you on. Know, there was one line in the movie that almost saved it for me where i went oh this is a good, good movie but sadly it was just one line what's that uh where they're running uh, after he thinks she's dead mm-hmm. and he's like uh what do you say he says Oh, you you keep trying to pick a fight, but I'm just glad you're alive. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, that's a good line. Yeah. I also I love I love so many of the little gags in this movie. Just little things like the whole family's captured and they're having a moment and they're trying to figure out how to escape. And then Violet's just like, boop, hamster balls down. Mm-hmm. He uses her power and no one, no, none of the rest of the family, the adults are too busy bickering. So no one really pays attention to her. And then she's like, okay, we've escaped now. So can we go? I, I like the scene with, with the daughter where they're, where they're in the ocean and the, the mom and the, and the, and the, and the kid, the son are bickering back and forth and she can see the reflection of the plane coming down in the water in front of her. And that's, and and it cuts to her saving them. Yeah. I really like that scene just because of the reflection and she's more attuned as to what's going on than mom is. So apparently, uh, Jack Jack's real name is John Jackson. Oh, okay. I, the, the, I don't, yeah, I don't know why. The character or the actor? The just the character, oh, okay. Jack Jack. Uh, and apparently, Jack Jack was based off of the director's own kid, and he's supposed to be the Human Torch for the Fantastic Four because he, you know, she goes into fire at one point. So that's who he's supposed to mimic. It. He was point. all of them. Yeah. Then the the Jack is also supposed to be the Jack of all trades. Oh, okay. So he gets yeah. all of the all of the powers. Thought Syndrome had a certain amount of style. I liked him as a villain. He was all right. Yeah. I saw I liked it coming his, a mile away. I, I did like I liked a part of his message. And the whole everyone, everyone will super, be super yeah. so that no, no one is. is super. Yeah. I liked part of that message, but at the same time I also didn't like some of the implications behind it, which was enforced universal mediocrity. If you take it too far. If you turn it into an episode of Black Mirror, kind yeah. of step too far. Speaking of steps, um, <laughs> so you know how Syndrome uh, walked that that chest out kind yeah. of that weird gait, yeah, l- little little man walk. Yeah, yeah. So apparently that was based and uh, inspired by a Pixar employee who walked around the office like that all the time. So they they chose that for his walk and put it in. They, no one has said who it is. Oh yeah. If you've ever person... been to a gym, just look for the littlest guy. That's exactly how he walks. Like a yep. peacock. Yep. Ar- yep. Arms out. Got a strut. <laughs> Little <laughs> Tyrannosaurus <laughs> hands kind of out in front. It's chicken walk. Strut. He can't see me, but I'm strutting. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a zombie in real life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You yeah. feeling it today, baby? Oh yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I'm just a girl. I was like, yeah. I agree. Honestly, <laughs> Matthew, you're bringing us down. Sorry, man. It's <laughs> you know, it's the voters. Yeah. They should choose better <clears throat> movies. There were good movies in that list. I I'm glad that it was The Incredibles because I really enjoyed it. But I do wish it had been something else. 
So I, I didn't hate the movie. Obviously, it's one of my favorite movies, Pixar wise. Mm-hmm. It's the only superhero movie that I've seen multiple times, except for Spider Man Two, because it's amazing. But there are better movies on that list. I didn't. I don't have any problems with this movie. It was just. It wasn't. It wasn't their finest work, not by a long shot. It is fun going back and watching their old animation and mm-hmm. looking at it and thinking, "I see where they have come from here," but this is still good quality animation for its time. This is one of the Pixar movies that doesn't have all of the in Pixar world nods and jokes like the the truck from Toy Story that's in every other Pixar movie because the director didn't know about those inside jokes when he came on board. Like no one told him like, hey, there's this joke. The only one that he really put in was the uh the nod to the to the the room at the the I think University of California that they that the Pixar, the number like one one three. Uh, someone's probably going to some listeners probably going to correct me on that because I don't have that in front of me right now. Yeah, I don't know if this ties in very well to the whole unified Pixar theory that the Internet has come up with. If you're familiar with it, it's that theory that most of the Pixar universe movies exist in the same universe. And the one that connects all of them together is Brave. Now, I, I do know that Pixar has come out and said that they everything is in the same universe. It is a, it is a meta universe. I, I, I would like a link to that because okay. last I checked, it hadn't been proven. OK. But uh, but but that's, if that is true, then fuck yes. But you never prove things like this when you can make your fans endlessly yeah. talk <laughs> about you and keep yeah. and do mind. full yeah. podcasts about yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> and give them free publicity. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't dislike this movie. It was a fine movie. It just it was a fine movie. Now I'm just going to put it down again. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it, was, it was formulaic. You know. Yeah. I get you. The uh, in Singapore, uh, for, for the version of the movie, the company in in Suricare was actually transport translated, not transported, translated. I, I think you guys will get a, a laugh out of this. Translated into meaning black hearted insurance company, if read literally in the Chinese character subtitles. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, I did take a little bit of satisfaction when he threw his boss through a wall. I don't really want to do that to any of my bosses now. But I can look back at my past working in humdrum, mediocre, soul crushing work and have I've worked under that guy that got, you know, little man syndrome. Come here now. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Grab like fucking HR violation. The boss. Yeah. And well, that's, a different, that's one of the differences yeah. between a boss and a leader. So, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah. This is one of the uh, really the only Pixar movie that uh, up until. Yeah, only Pixar movie up until probably, I think, Up, where it's shown through the eyes of humans and rather than any other character that Pixar has created, which is really interesting. And and that was one of the, the things that was the hardest for them to, to do was make it more human, even though Pixar oh, right, movies... they were doing... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Toy P- Story and Bugs Life and... Up until, uh, yeah. up until Up, yeah. And it is the first Disney or Pixar movie... Uh, to receive a PG rating uh, since it had a bit more violence compared to all the other films. That makes which, sense. Which I can see because there's a yeah. lot of, there's explosions, there's throwing people around, there's there's the this whole thing of, you know, with the, uh, you know, in a lot of movies that are supposed to be kids' movies, the, the, the children that are in peril are never hurt. And in this movie, you kind of, the bad guy is like, I will fucking hurt these kids. Yeah, they, he, they were shooting, trying to kill kids yeah and the, and the kids when they have to retaliate it's never like oh my god i can't do this they just look at it as i had to do this because it was going to save my sister or my mom or my dad and i kind of like that because i i didn't i don't like it when writers use children as a plot device and then not give them strength i mean i understand that children can i don't know if i'm going to word this properly um i'm interested to hear where you go Children as, a, children as children as a plot device can can be a very bad pitfall because uh, adults in in movies or in books think that kids cannot be strong that they are going to fall that they're going to run in the corner and they're going to run into that dark place and hide and, and and seeing a movie like this I think did a lot for kids especially little kids at the time seeing that kids could be strong kids could be just like their mom and dad or even stronger than their mom and dad and 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 be there for them and save the day at the same time. You want to further empower those kids, send them to go see it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> nice call out. <laughs> and 
kill some monsters too. <laughs> oh God! Still that movie. I'm going to see the second chat, the second chapter. Just fucking pick up a stick and beat it <laughs> the clown to death, and that's all I did. And then it retreated. Now I gotta kill this fucking clown. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's that that's that's my whole thing about using children as a plot device. No, it's it's good. Thank you. I uh, yeah. Kids are kids are made of rubber and anger, and my like crazed homicidal. I, they're 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 crazy things. They, they are certainly capable of great moments. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Go kids! Woo! <laughs> Go have a plethora of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so what else you got? That's about it. All right. I was going to go down a deep rabbit hole of like the technical on on all of the the computer animation. And a lot of people probably would like to hear that, but I think it also can make people zone out. Okay, I hear you. Yeah. Do you want to take this to the gaming table? Yeah, let's, let's take it to the gaming table. table. <laughs> Hi, this is Matthew. Thanks for listening. We wanted to take a moment to talk to you about uh, one of our sponsors, Guardian Games. Guardian Games has been with us since the very beginning of this show. Guardian Games is Portland's premier game store. They have magic miniatures, shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of RPGs, all the gaming swag, anything you could possibly want for your gaming experience. If you're ever in Portland and looking for a gaming store, Guardian Games is the biggest, most diverse store in Portland. You definitely owe it to yourself to go to Guardian Games. Bringing this back to the gaming side of things. Take it away, Dusty. Yeah, so to start, we have Craig T. Nelson, who plays Bob Parr, a.k.a. Mr. Incredible, who is Helen's husband, possessing the super strength. That's his big thing to do, is the super strength. Mr. Incredible. Mr. Incredible himself, yes. The thing. Basically, yeah. Without the clobbering time, without all the rocks. I mean, it's Craig T. Nelson, so have you you ever watched the show Coach? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, Poltergeist, the original Poltergeist. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the dad. That. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was also in uh, Devil's Advocate. He has a bit part in that movie, but it's okay. still a good part. Yeah. So uh, chaotic good. Are we all yeah. thinking the chaotic good. Not awful. Yeah, he lied too much. Yeah, yeah. And, and he then I would change that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was clearly chafing under the the structure that was you know placed upon him. So then let's taking it back to something I wanted to start doing. What would we say his intentions, his motivation is in this movie? What's he, what is his goal provide. in the story? Yeah, provide. His goal is provision. provide. Yeah. yeah. I, I think be, be... Safety to his family, safety to the city. He's, ah, he's, so he's providing safety. Yeah, but I also, okay. I also think uh, a feeling of being needed. I think in, the, in being behind the desk, he no longer feels like he's needed or wanted, even at home. Yeah. Because he's, they've gone into this humdrum, normal relationship without being a super. So he doesn't have that, that the emotional drug, the high of being a superhero anymore. Yeah. I mean, he, he definitely craves the continued excitement. So after 15 years, he's chasing a ghost. He's chasing a yeah. drug. So he wants to feel like he is contributing to the safety of his family and the, the rest of the country while also getting that thrill in the process. Yeah, he okay. dons a new red suit yeah. instead of buying a red Corvette. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he did get a red Corvette or something like that. Or it was black. black. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have Holly Hunter, who plays his wife, Helen Parr, who is also Elastigirl. She has the ability to stretch her body like rubber. Lawful good. Lawful good. Fully lawful good. Fully lawful yes. good. What has Holly Hunter been in? Always. Uh, she was also in uh, the uh, Su- Superman v. Batman. Uh, she was in that. She's been in a couple. She was in one of my favorite films with Robert Downey Jr., Home for the Holidays. That is a very good a movie. Thanksgiving movie. One of the few Thanksgiving holiday films. Yeah. Anyway, I lawful good. Absolutely. Yeah. I think Holly Hunter was, I think she did an okay job. There was probably, you know, if anybody was considered for the role before her no no yeah. i actually in in doing my mining on this there was nothing that said this person was going to play other than lily oh. tomlin no one else was going to play any of these parts fascinating and that really either it's been kept under wrap or just no one wanted to when, talk about it when it's voice acting it's sometimes different than normal yeah, things yeah, because yeah. you have what you want and then there's someone who plays that character out there already and you grab like uh the boss 
Bob's boss. Who, who is that? Wallace Shawn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck that voice. Come on, we all know that voice. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, and it's funny because uh, Jason Lee went in to do his parts and took it took him four days to to record all of his lines. And Craig T. Nelson apparently took him two and a half years to lay down all of his lines just because of scheduling. Apparently, he's a very busy person in Hollywood to get in and and do other things. So, huh. yeah. All right. Good on him. Who's next? And then after after Holly Hunter, we have Sarah Vowell as Violet Parr, the eldest child who can become invisible and generate an impact resistant force field. Good teenager. Yeah. Yeah, teen- she's teenager. a good teenager. Yeah. She's uh, a little she's a little more lawful than she is chaotic, I guess. Honestly, yeah. I, I had her down for lawful good. Yeah. Yeah, she she cares and she follows the rules. Yeah. Yeah. And well, dash child. <laughs> chaotic good. <laughs> Apparently the director heard her, didn't yeah. had never known her, didn't meet her, didn't know anything about her, but heard her on her podcast, This American Life, and yep. said, That's her. That's who I want. Reached out to her and she said, Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, she's a well-known podcaster. She's a journalist. She blogger. Um, she's written some books. My first exposure to her was oddly enough on the documentary film for the band They Might Be Giants. Oh, really? She was one of the fans talking about I how love They Might Be Giants influenced her. It's a really good documentary, even if you don't like the band. I never gave that band a, a half a chance. Mm. I don't you know should, why. You should give them a half a chance and then give them another half and put them together for a whole, whole team. chance. Okay, yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> Just build that little birdhouse in your soul. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not to put too fine a point on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Spencer Fox who played uh, the actual, too far away, but yeah, fist bump. Fist bump. Yeah, <laughs> the actual name, uh, everyone called him Dash, but his, his actual name was Dashio Parr. Dashio. Dashio. Yeah, okay. D-A-S-H-I-E-L-L. That sounds like a sparkly vampire name. It does. It's yeah. biblical, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Oh, all right. I, I don't know these things, but okay. That was the fast angel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You're going to have to cut that snort. No, leave the snort in. That was awesome. That was right up in the mic. Yeah, uh, you got all in my nostrils for that one. <laughs> it flared. Uh, he's the second child uh, possessing super speed. Uh, they actually made him, you know, the director made him run around the recording studio so he could get that out of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Squirrel. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think just like with his sister, uh, good preteen. Yeah. 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 I mean, the kid clearly had some inclinations towards chaos. He was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we have uh, the few, the two people that were doing the little weird baby voices for Jack Jack, but that's more of an yeah. NPC. Uh, Jason Lee as Buddy Pine slash Incrediboy slash Syndrome, nice. Mr. Incredible's fan turned super villain, who uses his scientific prowess to give himself enhanced abilities. Chaotic evil? I don't know. He had a pretty decent plan there. Which went into a worldview. I would that say he lawful was evil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I, I think he's a Vader. Okay. I was just thinking chaotic because just everything he had to like on some a couple of things were spur of the moment. So uh, only when he was forced to yeah, improvise. when his plan would go awry. Yeah. And he had a good plan. Yeah. Okay. It was all right. All right. Lawful it is then. All he right. had a good plan and he did not calculate his own creation learning yeah. to fight mm-hmm. its master. I, I will I yeah. will often play the weird villain role, but uh I know I'm yeah, he's lawful evil. Okay. And he uh Mall Rats, Chasing Amy. Graduate yeah. of Kevin Smith's films. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I really like Jason Lee. He is funny. Uh, he had a, a really good TV show for a while, which I'm... Forget the name of it. Uh, oh, my name is Earl. Yes. Yeah. It was hilarious. Yep. And he he is a really good actor yeah. outside of the the Kevin Smith world. He is a great actor. Yeah. I think. Then we have Samuel, the great Samuel L. Jackson as Lucius Best slash Frozone. Jesus, it's Samuel. It is a bad name. That Are is, you yeah. trying to get it now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like, like, do I want to go? I want to go hang out with my buddy Frozone. We're going to get Froyo. You, you just, it, it's, it's, eh. It was the 2000s. No excuse, that guys. Is true. Come on. That is Bob's <laughs> best friend who can form ice from humidity. Um, Honestly, it's Samuel Jackson. I would say chaotic good in most situations. I'm going to go lawful. Lawful yeah. good? Yeah. Uh, like he didn't, I mean, from, he, from what we saw of him. And his relationships in the movie, I'm, I'm going to go with lawful. Fair enough. 
And then we have Elizabeth Pena. As oh, what has Samuel L. Jackson been in? Dusty. Snakes on a plane. <laughs> there we uh, go. That's Black all we Snake need to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Goodfellas. Uh, MCU. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth Pena as Mirage, Syndrome's right-hand woman. I liked Mirage. She yeah. was rad. Mm-hmm. Lawful neutral. I would say lawful neutral. All yeah. Right. I would agree. And then rounding out the cast. Uh, Does that work for you? Oh, we didn't yeah, do motivations for the characters, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and one day, one day we'll be consistent. Rounding out, we have the director, Brad Bird, as Edna Emo, the fashion designer for these. We're going to do a motivation for Edna. What was Edna's motivation in no this capes. movie? No capes. That's her motivation. <laughs> no capes. She she was a tinkerer. She just yeah. she liked to build. She's a she gnome. Liked, she liked to see her work. She was a gnome. Yeah. Uh, yes. She was a straight up gnome. A yes. gnome tinkerer. Yeah. So, alignment. Neutral. Kind of good. Chaotic, definitely. I would, yeah, I'd go for good. I mean, she never waffled, really. She was a no, little bit I mean, flighty, and that's she, the chaos. She didn't go. Yeah. No, your your husband is is doing a, a super thing, but maybe you should call him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. She was red. I I think she's probably my favorite character out of the whole, oh, absolutely. whole movie. Yeah. It's just, and I think it's it's in the whole universe they built. It's there. this tiny. Well, uh, in the whole Pixar universe, I would disagree no, no, with in, that. In the the in Incredibles, the movie, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna fight you for Wally on that one because I think he's <laughs> the best character out of the Pixar universe. Yeah, he's got some great lines. I think he's the best character. Eva. Um, <laughs> Eva. I really like his monologues. <laughs> Eva. <laughs> Eh, it's an extremely Old emotional door. character. Um, I just think her facial expressions are great in in this movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's all that really qualified as characters. That that yeah. is all. I'm not going to do his boss. No, <laughs> that's an NPC. Yeah. NPC. Chaotic shit. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we give NPCs deeper insight, but I mean, it's not Wallace him. fucking Sean. Yeah. He's. He's known for his Why voice. Why would you go and yeah. do that? No, fuck, you, fuck. Yeah. Stop, stop doing that to my ears. <laughs> well, this, uh, normally we would take this uh, a step further and find out where we're going to go next. But it's already set up to go somewhere next. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, so fight, the sequel. Yeah. Go fight the mole man. Yeah, uh, fight the mole man or go watch the sequel. Um, but we didn't, on the first part of this, we did not kind of go uh, completely phased over the box office stuff. So real quick. The budget on this movie was ninety-two million dollars, which is a good good sum for an animated movie. Uh, opening weekend, it pulled almost it almost broke even at seventy million. It grossed in the U.S. two hundred and sixty-one million, and worldwide took in over half a billion dollars, six hundred and thirty-one yeah. million to be exact. Makes sense to me. So that that ranks up there with with today with a number of the Marvel movies. Right on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, speaking of superhero movies, I mean, Pixar is gonna... bankable. I mean, it just yeah. is. Yeah. I haven't seen some of their newer movies. I, Coco, I haven't seen yet. I haven't seen that either. Up, Up was the one I really wanted to do. I think maybe I'm just bitter because Up didn't win. Up was Up good. Was so good. I had it, so much I could have done with that. That movie. movie is the classic first ten minutes of the movie. Oh and you're God, bawling. you're done. That that that's yeah. its own thing. You're done. But yeah. Honestly, yeah. I could have done Toy Story. Yeah, and yeah. any any of the classic Pixar's. I, this don't get me wrong. I don't hate it. It just it wasn't it wasn't their best example. Okay, what what what's their best example for you? Uh, I think Up is their finest work to date. Mm-hmm. But I think their most groundbreaking was Toy Story. Yeah, their most groundbreaking definitely. I will completely one hundred percent agree with you on that one. Yeah. I think the best. I'm tied between Up and Inside Out. Inside Out is intense. It is a wonderful movie. And the the portrayal of the inside and the outside and the parallel of this this real person's life was beautiful. I, I liked A Bug's Life where they're basically teaching people how to revolt. I like that. But <laughs> yeah. well, you like Some those basic things. basic <laughs> economics. I think everyone should like those things. Wake up. <laughs> uh, I will agree with you, Nathaniel, on, on, on Inside Out. It was a great movie. It pulls at the emotional heartstrings. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Wally. That's my personal Pixar favorite movie. It's a good movie. Yeah. yeah. That was one of those movies that did not ever go where I thought it was gonna go. Like, I also really like yeah. the social commentary in it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, superheroes is what we're talking about yes. today. And superhero gaming is filled with themes of 
you know, with, with great power comes great responsibility. I thought but, you were going to say yeah. that. <laughs> the concepts of sacrifice versus uh, fulfillment. Putting yourself out there to save the world it's, so that other people don't have to. It's just one big martyr complex. It is essentially the martyr complex role-playing game, movie, but story, comic books, everything you can think of. That's what a superhero story is. It is uh, because rarely, rarely are the superheroes, unless they're the fucking Fantastic Four, doing it because they're rich and bored. Right? Yeah. Like, which is odd because the pulp heroes that became superheroes from the 30s to the 50s. Yeah, kind of like the shadow. Were, yeah, well, they okay. were the rich they guys. Were, they were Doc yeah. Savage. Well, that's Alan Quartermain, you know, Batman. Yeah. Like the, mm-hmm. co- the whole concept we had, I think, uh, I don't know what it was that led us to, well, led our collective consciousness to create the philanthro- philanthropic, superheroic billionaire as a trope. And a very unrealistic trope. I, there, I don't. There are certain characters like Carnegie that kind of lived Carnegie and Rockwell who kind of lived up to that that icon, but they didn't go out and fight crime. W- what is where does this whole billionaire putting all their money aside to go beat up criminals? Where does that come from? I, I don't understand where and I'll agree with that because I don't understand where people feel connected to Batman other than. I would love to go out and beat someone up and have all these toys or yeah. Iron Man. It's, I'd love to fly around in a suit of iron, you know, an yeah. iron suit, but I don't understand where it's like where the connect is. What am I missing? I don't know. Hold on. Let me think about that for a sec. Just give us, give us a pause point. A few moments later, <laughs> a few moments later, I would like to say, because it, he's moody. Um, Batman is a mood piece um, Mm -hmm. that everyone can relate to. But I think the truth is, is that Batman in a world of supers is a normal person ish becoming super. But super how? Because he has all this money and he can he can throw money at at something until he can. It's there. It's it's a story of his training, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's a, it's a story that if, if you, if you work hard, I suppose you can stand toe to toe with supers because there's in, in the, in the Batman universe where he takes down Superman Mm -hmm. as an old man. Well, and Superman's basically a God. Yeah. But he, if I remember, if I correct me if I'm wrong and I'm sure uh, he took him down with a kryptonite bullet. Uh, an arrow. An arrow? Was it an arrow? Okay, I should remember. Bull- shot at okay, I remember it was being, a, for some reason, a bullet. Dark Knight Returns. Check it out. Best okay. comic book ever. Um, but I, I don't know. You and I will, and, and the three of us, and most everybody listening, will never obtain the amount of wealth that a, a, a Stark that, has that, or, that's not the or point, Wayne though. has. So I don't know how anyone can say... I relate to that character, even though you're moody, you're 16 Agreed. year old. Yeah. And I'm de- but there's I'm no one who father. can't afford a rope with a piece of bent metal at the end. Well, that's kick ass then. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Basically. Okay. That's okay. Kick-ass. okay. I see yeah. that. I mean, okay. There, there is, there is no one who can't do what he does. He does it in more style, mm-hmm. but what he is, is a human standing amongst others. He's a human. And I think that that is the, the it's the same with Iron Man. Though Iron Man was a, a weapons, making I, industrialist uh, okay is, is uh you know tony stark reed richard the, 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 bruce the, wayne there's a, there's a nerd fight here um, they're, the, they're all of these these billionaires who but the difference have between this, batman and tony stark it's it, it, there is a difference there is a difference I'm, I'm going deeper than that i'm going deeper to the concept of the this collective consciousness that we developed around this time where we have become enamored of Really rich people deciding to go beat up criminals. And what is up with that? All of them do it. We have, is it glorifying the rich? Is it, no, is it a way they of, were of making the rich feel more? It, it, how, how are they wrong? Of Monte Cristo. His parents were killed in front of him. <laughs> in Murder Alley. They never should have been in Murder Alley. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, but what if Batman wasn't rich? What if he wasn't? All of these things that happened to him and he wasn't rich. Then we have, what do we have? The Punisher at that point? Yeah. Okay. Such a good. The, and okay. you notice that the enduring ones are the most human. How the hell is the Punisher <laughs> enduring? The Punisher? Yeah. Dude, he's been around for a real long no, time. No, I just know. I, I'm I'm, I know he's been around a long time, but how is that character like an he's enduring got two character? Movies. Yeah. The, 
I know. I, I actually kind of like never the Dolph watched Lundgren. Them, but <laughs> <laughs> um, how is that? Ca- I, I can. I understand how like Batman can be endearing. I can understand how Iron Man. Did you say can endearing be endearing or enduring? Oh, endearing. In, okay, okay. Yeah. I missed it. I was like endearing. How the hell no. is this vigilante endearing? Yeah, it, I think we, we've gone off. The You're watching a person here. What I was ultimately getting at was that we have these billionaire superheroes who just you go want, out. You and want to hear the Portland eat the rich? I'm not going to give it to you, okay? I'm and, just not. <laughs> and for me, I'm just I'm suddenly wondering for the first time, really, when we became enamored of rich people saving the day instead of the truth of rich people not saving the day ever. <sighs> There's a thought. Maybe yeah. it brings them down to our level. Well, it could be because so, because if they do get stabbed or someone rolls a fucking natural 20 and gets in under their armor, they're bleeding just like the rest of us. Yeah. Hmm. It just seems to me that all of these superheroes that are rich, one of their superpowers might as well be I'm filthy fucking rich. Well, it just but so they happens. never use that money to better <laughs> society. Instead, they use it for cool fucking toys to go beat up criminals who are like, the problem with society. Like, come on though no. like batman he's like all right i'm gonna go beat up this criminal and then shove him in the worst fucking hell hole in the city you've, you've where heard he's going the to batman escape. theory right <laughs> what that batman is in arkham yeah i've, I've heard yeah. that theory yeah oh and then he's just imagining the yeah, whole thing yeah the joker, joker is his doctor joker. yeah dr joker Arlequin is his, his yep. nurse yeah and then and these are all delusions that he's played out. It's actually a really good theory. I, I've I've read it multiple times. It's it's interesting. I I like it. Joker. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor Joker. Um, okay. Uh, Nurse Harley. Something or other. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Quinn. Yeah. Quinn Harley medicine Zell. women. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Something. Well, Prozac. Let's get back to the Incredibles here. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice fun tangent. One thing. Uh, the whole point of this is leading it back to the fact that they are not rich. And they have a, a family. They appear to be kind of getting by. And it, it's fascinating. Yeah, it's a Brady yeah. Bunch, basically. I love that. I love more down-to-earth heroes myself. Fallible. That's what that's that's what I like about them. Yeah. Um, whereas, like they have small problems. Yeah. Where, but they're where, big for them. Where, you know? Whereas, and it kind of go back, you know, with Bruce Wayne and with Tony Stark, there's nothing that they can't fix. Yeah except for you know their addictions and their their broken hearts <laughs> but so daddy this, there are other podcasts that talk a lot more in depth about and their, that. And their daddy issues <laughs> yeah so this is uh one of the themes of this is the, the family mm-hmm. you know the, the family that is not super rich that is also not super in shape that is not super together until later like if you're going to play a game based on the incredibles you're going to be playing more down-to-earth heroes yeah or a mix of that and ex heroes, former heroes, someone who's had that limelight taken away from them. And, you know, I love the whole hero relocation program thing. It's, it, I love that concept. I, of it. I was going to get into that, but it struck me too much of X Men and the Sentinels. They took it in a less violent direction and yeah. they, it turned it into more of a legal issue. Yeah. Right? I, I kind of took like it that. more as like Civil War uh, with, uh, with, in marvel oh we can't even get into that because i have no idea what you're talking about no that's fine yeah. just is, <laughs> is the is the i got no is, comment is the, there is the yeah. we need to have a registry no we don't yeah. that whole thing that went on i do like the fact that the government basically took their side in a way in the end like it didn't come out and back them publicly but it but it put them somewhere else so it's like look you've done this service for us we're going to make you go away but we're not going to murder you <laughs> like, yeah we're going to take care of everything well, um, this is a whole, whole, whole long rambling tangent way of saying that the kind of superhero game that we're going to want to play this is going to need to be something that can handle all levels of society, specifically the lower, the the family, the working class family that just happens to have superhero powers. Because Can you think theme. of a system that has a really fleshed out background like that? I can. I can think of a number of superhero systems, but I'm not going to beat around the fucking bush. Come We're going on. with Heroes of Fucking Limited. I got it right here. I brought my battered old copy from home, guys. Jesus, that is Tell battered. the listeners that this is from the fucking 80s. The, this is an, oh my uh, god. Yeah, it, look at that. It's, it's that four color cover. Yeah. The, dog yeah, dude, there's the, pages just <laughs> The gone. American flag. Yeah, flag it's, flag it's, flag almost Jerry, it's almost Jerry Bruckheimer flag. But on I there. have colors but, but hey, into this <laughs> matthew and listeners and dusty <laughs> <laughs> I, 
fuck. I'm going to tell you why I specifically decided immediately that Heroes Unlimited was the game. There's many great superhero games. Many of them have wonderful character creation systems. They have built-in, back-and-forth relationship drama. They have all kind of cool stuff. Heroes Unlimited is the only system I know, personally, that can do Jack-Jack. Random roll yeah. power. That's why. Oh, that's where you were going with that. Everything, yeah. all of your powers in Heroes Unlimited are randomly rolled. You can put together a strange Frankenstein smorgasbord of a character just from some random rolls. And I love that. I made so many random superheroes at middle school. And not going to lie, I made a lot of them in my 20s, too, because I pulled the book <laughs> back off my shelf and, and rolled it back out. Yeah. Now, yeah. it does have some questionable art. <laughs> no, that no, is straight no, up Jason Lee's the bad guy from Incredibles. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's right there in the yeah, book called the crazy Creating hero. the Crazy Hero. My favorite one is one that I call B-Guy. B guy, if he's in the superhero power section, he is the dumbest looking superhero ever. He looks about like the hero, the He Man action figure, Buzz Off, which was oh, the God, dumbest yeah. action figure ever. No, the neck, <laughs> the the elephant neck guy. Okay, well, he was he was dumber than Buzz Off actually. If your whole thing is your <laughs> neck can extend, oh really? How okay? I have boner head. <laughs> oh my God! Him? No. Uh, this guy, B guy, B guy. <laughs> yes, he kind of looks like the tick sidekick. Yeah, he does, but shit. Arthur, yeah. <laughs> Arthur, that's right. Arthur's way cooler than B guy. Arthur's guys, an accountant. Uh, <laughs> he the can tick, help you with your the tick. Taxes. I think is another really good example of the kind of story that you're going to be telling here. Is that these? Well, the tick is takes it to a bit more of a farce level. Yeah, but these I played the tick here in, in this game. Oh, well, and Heroes Unlimited, absolutely. Yeah. Every Heroes Unlimited game I've ever played has cred characters with the insanity that the tick gives them. Yeah. Because every character in the tick has, like, mental disorders. <laughs> Serious <laughs> mental disorders. This this movie, not so much. This is definitely more of that wholesome 1960, 1950s, 1960s feel to it, you know? And I guess, like, that whole flashback montage at the beginning of exploring their origin and that would have been get the married the, the, yeah. yeah the yeah because it was set in the 60s and there was a point where if you if you look if you if you've got an eagle eye on the newspaper it says like elastic girl hadn't been seen for 15 years so that would have put it uh what 19 if it's 1960 then 1945 so okay so they would have been around for world war ii but yeah heroes unlimited I know we talk about Palladium a lot, and I'm glad because we're gonna do about we're gonna do it again. Yeah, Palladium, Palladium works. Yeah, Palladium. it works. Every time I see people online talking about how it's a terrible system, I get a little twitch because I understand where they're coming from, but I feel that there's a lot of knee jerk reaction to it you from know, people who haven't actually played it. So is it a twitch? Is it a knee jerk reaction twitch, or is it bittersweet? Where is that same thing? <sighs> sure. Okay. You know what I did every time that I couldn't figure out a rule was? I just played the world mm -hmm. and winged it. Yeah. And well, I had I think that's what role playing is. Yeah. I find that the system is actually simple. It is not well explained, but once you've got a few games under your wing, you realize, oh, this is super simple. Right. It's a super, super, super simple basic mechanic. Would you say it's super, super incredible? I would say that it is super incredible. Yes. Super, super incredible. Would you give it two supers? <laughs> How many supers? <laughs> oh, <good God. laughs> How many Incredibles would you give this game and this movie? Uh, the game? Uh, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10? Th this this yeah. was... Uh, TSR did one too. Uh, what was it called? It was uh, Marvel, the Marvel role playing yeah, game. Yeah, and it was not good. I, I man, I agree. I know so I many have people it, have this you know boner I for left it. it on the shelf. It's it's at yeah. home. It is. It's another classic four color based mm -hmm. kind of superhero game. The big deal when it came out. I bought big it. Big deal. It's, it's my original copy. I just nice. but did <sighs> not like the character creation system in it, and I don't like tables. You have to roll a table. You have to roll on a table every time you want to do something in that game. And I know that some people like like having that on the table, rolling it every fucking time. But that's why I don't play Roll Master. Yeah. <laughs> For the same reason. I don't want to have to roll and then look up and reference 
the results. I like to just roll a die and know by looking at the die what happened. Yeah. That's why I like Heroes Unlimited, and that's why I like Palladium. I I know it. A lot of people hate it. Dear listener, I hope I, you I'm, don't. I'm with you. It's questionable. It needs a new edition. It has a new edition. Palladium? Are you talking a third? Yeah. Because it already has a second edition. Well, I know Heroes Unlimited has a second edition. Did anything actually change? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, a lot of stuff uh, slimmed down, um, yeah. especially in the character creation. Um, I, I have them here. You can look at them afterwards. Okay. Heroes Unlimited also, what I like about it is it allows you to play not just superheroes, but you can play aliens. It's got an alien table where you can roll for your powers. You can play hardware characters, which is essentially hmm. Batman. Cyborgs, yeah. Yeah, so oh, interesting. With, with a lot okay. of cool gear. Cyborgs. Robots. One of your character mutants. classes is the driver. You just have a sweet car. Oh, and wow. You, you build okay. out your car. He's a speed racer. Yeah, it even has Ninja Turtles in there because this well, game is wholly compatible with the Palladium's Teenage yeah, Mutant Ninja say, Turtles. It's, well, it's, it's their multiverse. Yeah. But those games specifically had identical character creation mechanics because a lot of the palladium games kind of yeah you gotta kind of hack them together these two plug and play yeah wonderful good to know yeah yeah i'm so glad we got to do palladium again yeah yeah. (laughs) you guys are always happy when we do palladium games so it's it's this thing where it's this underappreciated system oh i I get that that kind of got kicked around and Mm -hmm. had a lot of troubles but it's yeah. so beautiful and it's so good and it's so in depth and it's it's so prolific. Like if you were if you were an author that released a book a year, mm-hmm. you'd still have to be seventy to catch up to where Kevin Sambiata <laughs> is. The man is a he's a workhorse. He's a prolific workhorse. He is always making new material. He will not stop. There is nothing that can stop him. Not people fucking him over and running away with his money or his ideas or nothing. Licensing. Or licensing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's yeah, I, I've got nothing but love for the company. Well, right. Dusty, we're over here raving about Palladium. Uh-huh. Did you have a system that you would like to do this particular superhero take in? Well, I always will default to D Moder- D20 Modern because I love that system. Doable. Um, it's doable. And also Mutants and Masterminds. But I know a lot of people kind of cringe when they see Mutants and Masterminds. I don't know. I don't know it deeply like you guys do with Palladium. I have run it a few times and I do enjoy it. I think it would work well for this setting. There are. Uh, there's another game that I would want to propose, but I've already forgotten the name of it, which is sad because I backed it on Kickstarter a while ago. <gasps> and it's a Powered by the Apocalypse superhero game. I'll have to mention it some other time. In now the, the name escapes yeah. me and it was actually it's a beautiful fucking game beautiful game and like it has full color uh illustrations comic style you gotta get your bookshelf back just up, man. yeah the shelves need to be put back up uh worlds in peril that's the name of the game worlds in peril but it's got full color comic book style illustrations teaching you how to play the game nice Ooh, and that's something is I'd rarely look, that reminds that me one. of uh hackmaster they do that too yeah they, they run a comic <clears> strip inside to teach you how to play it, they do a, a Knights of the Knights, Knights of the Dinner, Dinner Table. table. <laughs> yeah. What was the name of it? Worlds in Peril. All right, we'll have yeah. to throw that up on the site. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, it, you know, I'm not super. I'm not super. I'm not in the <laughs> supers, so I never got play at my table. Didn't Hackmaster you know? win our D and D movie? <laughs> no, Palladium Fantasy. Oh, War. right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what other game would you play for that? Come on. <laughs> We got to find one that Hackmaster works for. That is a beautiful system, and it deserves a shout. You know, speaking of which, that brings me to a good tangent, a good mm. side conversation mm. to actually address to our listeners. Something that we brought up earlier in our private chat mm-hmm. was the idea of doing a, an occasional have games, what movies yeah. Yeah. Uh, spin off on our Patreon. Kind of like that. So if someone's like, hey, I got this game, what movies can I watch to get into the brain of, you know, get get some creative juices going? So uh, we could start with Hackmaster. We could think on that. No, 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 no. I don't want this to be a Suicide Squad. No. Hackmaster, <laughs> Hackmaster deserves a proven format. <laughs> we tried that already. We did. <laughs> oh, our lost episode. Well, anyway. Yeah. No, I like yeah. that. So um, how many capes would you give this movie? This is an eight cape uh, out of ten. Out of ten. This Always is an out of eight, ten. Eight, eight cape movie. Eight capes. It's, it's, eight a capes. Good, it's a good yeah. solid movie. Yeah, I would agree. Eight capes. Eight I'm, capes? Eight capes. 
<laughs> no capes. No capes. <laughs> no capes, darling. No capes. Uh, however, if I had to use capes as a scoring system, I would say eight. I would say it's yeah. an eight out of ten. I enjoyed My, it for different reasons. I think we all enjoyed it for different, different reasons. reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, up was a nine. I would say up was nine, if not Always a ten. Yeah. Twelve. Up would be a ten. I would say inside out will be a ten. Uh, honestly, I'm surprised you rated it higher, man. <laughs> I thought you would give it like a, a six or a seven. You know, yeah. there there is middle ground. My last uh-huh. name is Gray. It's not uh, black and white. It's not on or off. You can yeah. like something and not think it's the absolute shit. You know? <laughs> Fair enough. There's shades yeah. to things, and this this was a good movie. Yeah. It just it wasn't rave worthy, in my opinion. Oh, different kind of rave. Yeah. Okay, so what are we doing next? Oh, dear Lord. We are doing Apocalypse Now. Yes. A completely different tone <laughs> yeah. and theme. This, this is... I'm I'm actually really interested yeah. to see if anyone will 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 chime in and comment on on when this when that drops. I'd love to hear people's thoughts on Apocalypse Now, or if, if any if any of the listeners that we have, if any of you have seen this movie or want to I trudge through it, it, yeah, because it's <laughs> it's a it's a it's a it's a heavy movie. Yeah, I. We've done too much fluff. I I actually got on our personal host forum and I sniveled. And I whined, and I get a serious movie, and I'm so happy. <laughs> we will bring the votes back after this one. Uh, but one reason that I am totally fine with us doing something and not voting on it is simply because we don't have enough time for votes. So I figure if yeah. we start voting now. Do we want to set up the next one? Uh, we should set up the next we one. We should set up the next one. Weren't we talking about something earlier? Yeah, we, we had we had two different streams of consciousness on that. We were going to go the, like... Classics, unless that was where Apocalypse Now came in. Yeah. Apocalypse Now is the classic, yeah. And then, but we we're also going to do like the animals. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're gonna do right, that. right, right. So yeah. we'll do like Sharknado, snakes, snakes on, on a plane, 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 plane uh, zombie Zombiever. Yes. <laughs> and then we need a fourth one. No, I want to get a few more. We'll do. We'll we'll no, pull. four. Otherwise, it'll get lost. Those are good ones. I I've been real. Let us six. know what you think, four to listeners. Six. Let us know what you I'm, think. I'm good with the six. We were, and letting people have three three votes. That's good. Yeah, I like six or seven because the Zombie I, versus surprisingly <laughs> a solid movie. <laughs> so if you, are one of our dear listeners, can think of a movie that has like weird screwed up animals that would be good for us to review, but no Cujo, it has to be funny. That that's the thing that ties those movies together. Yeah, just outlandish out there. Uh, that would also be good to run as a game. Please drop us a line or message us or just shout. yeah, hit us up on yeah. Discord, even just to say hi. Yeah, we'd yeah. love you. We'd love to hear from you. Well, anyway, um, let's go ahead and close this out. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. I was Matthew, and I was Dusty, and I'm Nathaniel, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're still pretty new to the scene, and we'd love to get your feedback. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on iTunes with your thoughts. Good or bad, they really help us get the word out. If you want to say hello, drop us a line on all of the usual social media sites. You can find the links right there in the show notes. You can also leave us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Half Movies Will Game is a Breakfast Puppies podcast production, and our episodes are distributed under CCBYND 4.0 license. Our opening theme is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, with introductory narration provided by Isaac Scher. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.